Five years of fighting for the family, standing for the church, and laboring to return to a moral and biblically based culture. This is the American Family Association and AFA Today. And this is a live shot if you're watching on the, um, on the um, AFA channel. On, uh, well, we're on some uh, television stations and then also online at AFR.net. Uh, that's a live shot of the Brooklyn Bridge. And you can see very simply, it is just a splendid day in the uh, New York area. Welcome to the uh, New York broadcast studios of the American Families Association's oldest uh, broadcast, AFA Today. We are uh, grateful to be with you. Kevin McCullough is my name, and we have lots to get to. I don't know uh, what kind of uh, weekend you had, and uh, uh, guys in the video suite, uh, you're chopping me off there. See if you can fix that picture. Uh, the, um, the, int the interesting thing about uh, this weekend is that there was a lot of discussion all of a sudden about terrorism and why terrorism is uh, now important and what's going on with it and uh, why it's having some sort of uh, resurgence in the uh, national discussion. And what we've got, uh, quite simply, is uh, a reverse course of what we were told all throughout 2012. We were told in 2012 that the uh, Al-Qaeda network was dead. We were told that they were on their last breath. We were told over and over again that uh, you just, you know, you, you've got to understand we've got Al-Qaeda on the run. There's nothing that can be... Uh, assumed about uh, terrorism still being active and alive. And what we learned from the weekend news shows was quite simple. Uh, Al-Qaeda is alive. Uh, it is very much active. And in fact, they have gone to the, what I consider to be a rather uh, radical extreme, of closing a whole bunch of bases uh, in order to avoid the appearance of having another, I don't know, Benghazi uh, moment. And so what we're uh, looking at today is uh, dozens and dozens of embassies uh, that are closed and personnel that are uh, in kind of a furloughed timeout right now. And the work of the United States going on in these different countries is completed. Uh, the, 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 we're not going to we're not going to see uh, any more uh, activity until maybe the end of August from some of these places. So uh, at the end of the day, I really do uh, hope and sincerely trust that uh, we have a grasp of whatever that terrorist threat is. Some of the senators on some of those shows saying things like, uh, we've got um, you know, the most serious threat that has been on hand since 9-11. I think one senator uh, even implied that it might be as bad as 9-11 that this chatter was discussing. And it kind of stems from uh, uh, Mr. Al-Zwahiri, who has been the uh, kind of replacement for bin Laden, uh, telling the Al-Qaeda on the Arab Peninsula, that's AKA, that's AQAP, uh, which is really where the hotbed is now of, of Al-Qaeda's operations, uh, to rise up and to uh, exact vengeance for the, um, uh, for the uh, killing of different Al-Qaeda personnel in recent days. Uh, that, that was the major uh, news headlines over the weekend, and we are watching that, of course, for you. But friends, I'm not going to be confused for a second that that's by any stretch of the imagination, uh, imagination the only thing that we should be uh, paying attention to today, because there's a lot of other stuff that you need to know about. So we're going to talk about it at 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Again, welcome to a brand new week. Kevin McCullough is always glad to have you with us. Um, some good news, if you're over on onenewsnow.com or if you plan on visiting there today, and I encourage everybody that uh, wants to know what's going on in terms of the world of of uh, faith and family and values issues, onenewsnow.com, one of the first stops I hit every single day, and I go there several times a day uh, to make sure that I do uh, stay up with uh, the latest that's going on. A new poll question up today. I just voted in it myself. Let me uh, give you the latest uh, poll question. Why does the political left so strongly push programs like government-funded child care? Uh, they, uh, the uh, different options, they know many people love things that appear to be free. They sincerely believe bigger government is always the solution, or they know dependence on government assistance ensures their political future. That was the choice I voted for uh, and submitted my vote just minutes ago. I hope that you will consider doing the same. But over there on OneNewsNow.com, a little bit of good news today. Uh, Charlie Butts from OneNewsNow.com reporting that uh, the abortion industry is setting a new record, one that pro-lifers should consider as a positive sign, Basing its decision on two dozen serious health and safety violations, the North Carolina Department of Health has suspended 
the license of FemCare, an abortion clinic in Asheville, North Carolina, that marks the 42nd abortion clinic to close so far this year, eclipsing 24 closed in 2012. Uh, I find that to be an extremely encouraging sign. 42 abortion clinics have closed their doors. Now, there's going to be people that are going to say, Kevin, you must really hate women if you say that's a good thing, and I'll ask them why. They won't have an answer. Uh, they, they'll, they'll come up with something, you know, kind of uh, hemming and hawing, saying, well, because, you know, they, uh, women are in need of, of, of these clinics for different health services. To which I'll ask, what health service includes the killing of your own offspring? By a doctor or by anybody else? See, one of the charges that we just sentenced that, that uh, horrific uh, monster in Ohio last week, I'm um, forgetting his name, but the guy that kidnapped the, the girls and had them in the, he'd impregnate one of them, and when she would get pregnant, he would, he would punch her in the stomach until the baby, yeah, last name of Castro, uh, he, would, he would punch him in the belly until the uh, child died. And he got prosecuted for murder, besides all the kidnapping things, under the laws of killing an unborn child. See, it can't be, bo- it can't be both. You, it can't just be a blob of tissue that you're just getting rid of and also a child. It is one or the other. And increasingly, the courts and public opinion are showing that we believe it's a child, partly because it's human in its DNA and it is fully alive. There's no doubt about any of those things. 888-589-8840. But uh, this is the 42nd clinic to close in 2013. That's that's an incredible thing. You can read all about it at onenewsnow.com. Go there and check it out. Also, there's an interesting story there, and I don't think we'll have time to get to it today, uh, but possibly on tomorrow's broadcast, Uh, possibly on the Kevin McCullough show tonight. You can check it out. Um, But an atheist group has basically been able to get a school to ban a mom from being able to pray on the campus of the school who's simply concerned for the safety of her children and for other students. She goes there to pray for the school every day, and an atheist group has gotten her kicked out. It's a public school campus. Um, and the Alliance Defending Freedom has picked up the cause, and he's, they're going to uh, defend her uh, case. It's interesting. I was reading some of the uh, comments over at onenewsnow.com surrounding this story. There's a lot of people talking about how you're not supposed to pray publicly anyway. Like uh, She could get, be just as effective praying from her closet or from her bedside as she is praying on the property of the school itself. Uh, Again, we won't have time probably to get to that story today. If we do, uh, we'll take your calls on it. But I find it interesting uh, that that there's even amongst Christians some degree of, uh, hey, that's not really the best way to go about it. We can talk about that uh, at some point down the road. But I want to get to uh, this story today that I find to be really fascinating on a human level. And it comes from an unlikely source. Uh, The Christianity Today magazine has a website, ChristianityToday.com, that uh, people read. In fact, I think they have far more readers to their website than they do their magazine now. And Christianity Today doesn't particularly claim to be conservative in its viewpoint, though you will find uh, traditional uh, Christian viewpoints in many of the articles that uh, are printed there. Every now and then they have some people that come in and write some provocative stuff from other places, but... You know, if you don't know your own faith and you're not growing in it and you're not deepening it every day, then that's kind of your fault. Uh, It's not the uh, magazines. And uh, I think that the magazine does a good job of allowing people to uh, consider the claims of different viewpoints and then decide for themselves what they really believe is true. I think if you you get into this mindset of we have to drink the Christian Kool-Aid that's always told at our church or on our radio station or in our magazines or wherever— and we just don't ever question anything, I think we become like sheep instead of people. And God intended us to think. He didn't intend for us to just sit back and tell other people to tell us what to think. We become as mindless and stupid and as uh, irrelevant to the culture as a lot of the people that we talk about on the left who don't think for themselves. So that's a bad habit to get into, and we we shouldn't pursue that. We should walk through life with the Bible in one hand and the front page of the newspaper in the other, and we should use one to influence how we think about the other. 
And what I mean by that is we should use the Bible to influence how we think about what's going on in the pages of the newspaper. So that's one of the reasons why we commit ourselves every day on this broadcast and on the Kevin McCullough Show, both uh, each day, to uh, obliterate confusion, pull confusion out of the culture, look at it for what it is, and just chop it up into a bazillion pieces and, and blow it away, just obliterate it completely, replacing that with biblical thinking, clarity, truth, uh, and truth comes from only one source. That is the God of the universe. Um, so anyway, this article on USA Today, penned by Stephanie Smith, who's a guest writer, and they've done something really cute over at the USA Today. If you go to Bible college, if you go to seminary, you'll take a class called hermeneutics. It's all about uh, biblical exposition, being a good expositor of the word, getting into the, the original languages of the text of Scripture and making sure that you're accurate with it. That's what hermeneutics is all about. So they've done this kind of cute little thing over at USA Today. See, they, they took the word her, and then they put a dot, and then menudics. So it's her dot menudics. But it's where all the women go to blog. Isn't that cute? Weren't they original in that? Her menudics? Get it? Her? Anyway, uh, so... It's also an interesting place to go and read things from time to time that make you think. And uh, this particular article did today. Stephanie Smith penned an article uh, saying, basically, must the good wife always stand by her man? And this is what I want to talk to you about at 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Now, she, she's talking about Huma Abedin, who is not a believer. In fact, I believe she's a practicing Muslim. But when Huma Abedin, who is the wife of Anthony Weiner, uh, came out after the Carlos Danger scandal and was uh, seen with him at the news conference and standing up and making a statement and so forth and so on, she did something that Stephanie Smith said was rather brave for her as a woman. In fact, she finds it a little bit admirable. She came out and she gave voice to her own words, and she, she said, uh, the decision I've made uh, to stay with my family is for me, it's for my son, it's for the welfare of our family. Uh, she, the, the, the full sentence of that is uh, New Yorkers will have to decide for themselves whether or not to give him a second chance if he wants to be mayor. Uh, I had to make that decision for myself, for my son, and for our family, and I know that in my heart I made the right one. Now, Stephanie Smith, the writer of the article at USA Today, uh, says that she may maintain her decision as a personal one, that she did this for her own welfare and for the welfare of her family, et cetera, et cetera. But Smith says the danger in this is that there's a subtle invitation to follow her lead, and that sends the message to women everywhere, the good wife is the one who is ever faithful to her man, whether or not he is faithful to her. Then Smith says, yet in reality, relationships are far too multidimensional for such a clean caricature. In fact, the good wife does not and should not, says Smith, look the same from one marriage to another. For some women, it might look like bringing public accountability to her husband's destructive habits is what a good wife would be de uh, defined by. Sometimes you're going to have a wife who says, hey, look, for the welfare of our children and for even the spiritual um, good of my man, I'm not going to stand by him. I'm going to take the kids, we're going to separate for a period of time to show him that he needs to be accountable in his actions towards me. Smith's basis of the article is basically that the good wife isn't the one who always just stays by her guy. I'm curious how you think about that today at 888-589-8840. Should the good wife always stay? 888-589-8840. Your thoughts on that? Coming up on AFA Today, I'm Kevin McCullough. So glad you're with us.